Welcome to A to Z Summary YouTube channel. Here is a detailed analysis and summary of the book Confessions by Jean-Jacques Rousseau. For regular updates I request you to subscribe our channel, also you can join our community by becoming a member of our channel, you get access to a whole range of exclusive perks that will take your experience to the next level, so, what are you waiting for, joining our channel membership is easy, just click the join button below to unlock all these amazing perks and support our channel directly. Your membership helps us create more content and improve our videos for everyone. The themes of the book are The characters in the book are Jean-Jacques Rousseau's Confessions is an autobiography that provides an intimate look into his life, thoughts, and feelings. Written in the 18th century, it covers his experiences from childhood to middle age, showcasing his journey from an orphan boy to a famous philosopher. Rousseau is very honest and open in the book, sharing both his achievements and his flaws. He talks about his struggles, his relationships, and his controversial ideas, which often challenged the norms of his time. Through his confessions, Rousseau aimed to show the complexity of human nature and the importance of being true to oneself. The book is significant because it marked a new approach to autobiography, emphasizing personal introspection and emotional depth. It helped shape modern ideas about individuality and self-expression. Book I, Early Childhood, Rousseau begins with his birth on June 28, 1712, in Geneva. He paints a picture of his parents' love, highlighting his mother's tragic death shortly after his birth. His father, Isaac Rousseau, a watchmaker with a love for books, encouraged Jean-Jacques early reading habits. Rousseau describes the joy and escape he found in his mother's library, reading romances and classical works. When his father got into legal trouble and had to leave Geneva, Rousseau and his brother were left in the care of their maternal uncle, Gabriel Bernard. At Bassi, Rousseau stayed with a Protestant minister, experiencing a mix of affection and strict discipline, which fostered his love for nature and independence. Book 2, Youth and Early Education, Returning to Geneva, Rousseau was apprenticed to a brutal engraver. The harsh treatment and monotonous work led him to run away at 16. His journey took him to Savoy, where he met Madame de Warrens, a Catholic convert who played a pivotal role in his life. She took him under her wing, converted him to Catholicism, and provided him with education and care. This relationship was a blend of maternal care and romantic affection, shaping his intellectual and emotional development. Book 3, Wanderings and Adventures, Madame de Warren sent Rousseau to Turin for formal conversion to Catholicism, where he worked as a servant. His experiences in Turin, dealing with the highs and lows of servitude, were formative. He returned to Annecy to be with Madame de Warrens, who had moved there. Rousseau tried various occupations, including music tutoring. His travels and interactions during this period offered rich insights into human nature and society, influencing his later philosophical ideas. Book 4, Return to Geneva and Further Travels, Rousseau briefly returned to Geneva, where he reclaimed his Protestant faith. However, his restlessness soon led him back to Savoy. He settled at Les Charmettes with Madame de Warrens, a period he regarded as one of the happiest in his life. Immersed in books, he studied diverse subjects, including philosophy, science, and music. The serene rural setting deepened his appreciation for nature, an enduring theme in his works. This time of intense intellectual growth and emotional fulfillment was pivotal in shaping his future writings. Book V, Paris and the Development of Ideas, Leaving Les Charmettes, Rousseau moved to Paris, hoping to establish himself. He struggled with poverty and worked on various projects, including a system of musical notation that garnered attention in intellectual circles. Although he began to be recognized for his talents, Rousseau often felt misunderstood and isolated in the bustling city. His interactions with Parisian intellectuals and his observations of urban life influenced his developing ideas about society and human nature. Book 6 the Academy of Dijon and Early Success, Rousseau secured a position as secretary to the French ambassador in Venice, but the job ended in conflict. Returning to Paris, 
he focused on his intellectual pursuits. His discourse on the sciences and arts won the prize from the Academy of Dijon in 1749. In this work, Rousseau argued that progress in sciences and arts had corrupted human morality, a provocative thesis that established him as a significant philosophical voice. His newfound fame brought both acclaim and controversy. Book 7, The Social Contract and Emile, Rousseau continued to write prolifically. His major works from this period include The Social Contract and Emile, or on education. The Social Contract presented his ideas on political philosophy, advocating for the general will and popular sovereignty. Emile explored education and individual development, emphasizing nature and freedom. These works solidified Rousseau's reputation but also sparked intense debate and opposition. His radical ideas challenged existing norms, leading to conflicts with authorities and other intellectuals. Book 8, Personal Struggles and Exile, Despite his rising fame, Rousseau's personal life was turbulent. His relationship with Therese Levasseur, a laundress, resulted in five children, all of whom he controversially sent to foundling homes. His works, especially Emile, were condemned by both the French and Swiss authorities. Facing persecution, Rousseau fled France, seeking refuge in Switzerland. However, he faced hostility there as well, reflecting the polarizing nature of his ideas. Book 9, England and Later Works, invited by the philosopher David Hume, Rousseau sought refuge in England. However, paranoia and conflicts, particularly with Hume, strained his stay. Despite these challenges, Rousseau continued to write, producing the Confessions and other autobiographical works. These writings reflect his introspection and efforts to understand his life and experiences, providing a candid portrayal of his thoughts and emotions during this tumultuous period. Book X, Reflections in Philosophy, Rousseau returned to France under an assumed name, living in relative obscurity. He continued to write, delving deeper into his philosophical ideas and personal reflections. This period saw the development of his thoughts on education, society, and human nature. Rousseau's writings from this time influenced future generations of thinkers and cemented his legacy as a profound philosophical and literary figure. Book 11, Solitude and self discovery In his final years, Rousseau sought solitude, moving to various locations in France. He found peace in nature and contemplation, though he remained wary of society and its judgments. His health declined, but his intellectual vigor persisted, leading to the completion of the Confessions and other reflective writings. These works offer a deep insight into his personal and philosophical journey, emphasizing his quest for authenticity and understanding. Book 12, Legacy and Final Thoughts, Rousseau died on July 2, 1778, leaving behind a complex legacy. The Confessions stands as a testament to his quest for self-understanding and truth. Through vivid descriptions of his experiences, emotions, and thoughts, Rousseau provides readers with a deeply personal and philosophical narrative. His journey from a troubled childhood to a prominent intellectual figure, marked by inner turmoil and societal challenges, is portrayed with remarkable candor and literary skill. The Confessions paved the way for modern autobiography, influencing the Romantic movement and later existential thought. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content.